Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. This is the fifth deep learning project video that we are working on and in this video we will be building a face mask detection system using convolutional neural network. So we will start with the data set where we work on processing this image data set so that we can train our convolutional neural network. So once this process has been done we will also be building a predictive system so that this trained model can be used to make further predictions of predicting whether a person is wearing a mask or not okay so let's get started right away and before going into the hands on part let's try to discuss the workflow that we are going to follow as mentioned earlier the first step is collecting the appropriate data set so this data set basically contains two set of images the first set of images is people wearing mask and the second set of image is basically people who are not wearing a mask so this is basically a binary classification problem and this is the data set that we will be working on and we will be working on a Kaggle data set for this purpose so once we have this data set there are a lot of processing that we have to do so this process is called as image processing where we have to do processing such as resizing of images converting these images into numpy arrays and all those things so once this image has been processed the next step would be to split these images as training data and testing data as most of you might be aware that we use this training set to train our neural network and we use this test set to evaluate our model's performance so once this step is done we feed this data to our convolutional neural network which tries to find uh, you know how a person with mask look like and how a person without a mask would look like so once this training has been done we will evaluate this convolutional neural network with certain evaluation metrics so once all these are done we will build a predictive system where if you feed an image to this convolutional neural network it will tell you whether that person is wearing a mask or not so these are the steps that we will follow and let's get started so I'm opening my Google Colab environment. So this is where I'll be doing all this uh, programming. So uh, this is the site where you can get this face mask data set. So there are like a lot of uh, data sets that is available for this particular use case. So you can refer those. And this is the data set that I'm going to work on. I'll also share this link in this video description. You can check that out. Okay. So the first step is to make sure that the Kaggle library is installed in your Google Colab environment. Actually, it will be installed. Uh, but it's better to run this cell okay and the next step is connect your system as this is a deep learning use case we can get gpu access so that the training happens quickly okay so to enable uh, gpu privileges go to this runtime and choose this change runtime type so here in this hardware accelerator i need to select gpu okay so if you run your uh, training without this gpu so it will basically run on cpu so it will take a long time to complete the training so make sure you have uh, enabled this gpu and i'll uh, save this so now i can connect my system and uh, i'm not going to download this data set so you can see the size of this data set so what i'm going to do is uh, import this data set using the api so from this you can copy the api for this data set so i'm sure like most of you might know this already because i have done this in many of my videos i'll also show you what are the things that need to be done so to get this data set from the api you need to have a api token okay so it's basically a json file that is found in your account so make sure you have an account in kaggle and also make sure uh, your account is verified with your phone number then only you can get access to this data set so otherwise you will get this 403 forbidden error so make sure all these are done okay so once that part is done on top right corner you will see this account option so go to that account so here you can see this your profile and account now we have to go to this account and here just scroll below you will see an option called as create new api token so once you click this a uh, uh, file will be downloaded which is kaggle.json so i already have this file so i'm not going to download this as of now but make sure you have uh, downloading this api file and in some you know data uh, in some competition you need to accept the competition rules then only you can use that api so that's like the other thing that you need to keep in your mind okay so all the things that you have to do uh, are like just create an account in kaggle verify your phone number and details and download the kaggle.json file and come back to your uh, google collab environment go to this files and here is where we have to upload this uh, kaggle.json it basically contains the details about your kaggle account so here you can see this upload to session storage option or you can just click right click here and give this upload 
and now I need to upload this uh, Kaggle.json file. So I have this in my desktop. So I'll search for this. Okay, so I have this file. So you can see this here. So Kaggle.json. So once this file is downloaded, you can run the other cell. So this, uh, you know, code snippet is like pretty common. So it is just like configuring the path of this Kaggle.json. You don't have to change any of these details. And also I'll be giving this uh, link for this particular collab notebook in this video description. You can download this file and you can like work on it as well. So first I'll run this cell which is basically to install the Kaggle library in Python. Here we can see this has already been installed so no issues. And now we have to run this cell to configure the path of this Kaggle.json. So once this has run successfully now we need to import this data set. As I've told you. You can do this by going to the site and here from this option you can copy this command okay so it, it's basically is it's nothing but it contains this kaggle data sets download d and this particular account and the data set name okay and make sure you include uh, exclamatory mark before this api command okay so then only you can like download this data set so i'll run this cell so this will download this data set which is present here so once this data has been downloaded, downloaded, you can see your dataset files from this files navigation bar. So let's wait for this. So it won't take much time. It's, it's just like, uh, you know, 163 MB. So it has downloaded. Now I'll go to this files and see if my file is downloaded. So this is the file that we downloaded using this Kaggle API, which is in the form of a compressed file, which is .zip. Now we need to extract this file. And this is the code snippet for this. So we have a library in Python called a zip file, which is also installed already in Google Colab environment. So I'm importing this uh, a zip file uh, class from the zip file library, basically this module. And this is what we are going to use to extract our files. And this dataset variable is nothing but the path of our compressed dataset file. So you can get this by going to this files and copying the path. So once you copy this path, it's, it's basically nothing but this path that I've pasted here. Okay. And uh, we are opening this. Basically, we are reading this file as a zip and then we are extracting. Once this extraction is done, we need to print the data set is extracted. So I'll run this. So once this process is done, we can also see what are all the folders that we have. So I'll go to these files again. So we have a new folder called as data. So this is uh, the extracted content of this face mask data set dot zip. So I'll open this. So here we have two folders first folder is with mask and the second folder is without mask so this folder contains all the images of people wearing mask and this will contain the images of people not wearing the mask so this data set is basically present in two folders so sometimes what happens is uh, this won't be the case so all these two class or three class of images will be present in the same folder so in that case you need to uh, you know get the labels in a different format but in this case it's it's pretty easy because all these images are segregated already so we don't have an uh, issue on that part so i'll close this and also you can run this uh, exclamatory mark and ls command which is basically to list your directories so what are all the folders and files that you have so we have this data face mask data set dot zip kaggle dot json sample data etc now uh, the next processes that we have to do are import the required dependencies, create labels for our images, process the images, split it into train test split, train a convolutional neural network and build a predictive system. So these are the steps that we will follow. So let's start with importing these data sets. So I'll create a text cell and I'll mention this as importing the dependencies. So I'll import the basic libraries so i want to import os to uh, access the files that we have in those folders i'll also import numpy import numpy as np because we will convert these images into numpy arrays uh, pandas won't be necessary in this case i'm not like importing it i'll also import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt i'll also import matplotlib dot image as mpimg so these two uh, you know matplotlib library has this modules of pyplot and image and we are going to use these modules in order to uh, you know visualize our images and basically do some processing so that's the purpose i'll also import cv2 library so this uh, cv2 library is used for image processing and, and all those 
tasks which are related to images and uh, there is another function that we need to import which is from google.collab.patches import cv2 im show now this is a interesting function so in cv2 library we have a function called as im show which kind of creates a new window and displays your image in that window and in this collab environment it's not possible to do that so google collab kind of as a, a similar function which is stored in this google collab patches and this is called a cv2 underscore im show so if you want to use the one that is present in cv2 library so you would give this a cv2 dot im show but we won't use that in this notebook environment so i hope that is clear and the next thing that we will import is from pill which is basically your pillow library i'm going to import image so pillow is also another image processing library that we have it is used to read images and do some processing on it and then i'll import my train test split from sklearn dot model selection import train test split so this function is used to split our data into training data and test data so let's run this cell so these are the libraries that we need so apart from this for building our neural networks we will be using tensorflow and keras so we will import that uh, later in this course uh, later in this like video and now uh, i need to analyze the images that is present in these two folders so let's work on it so here i'm creating a variable called as with mask files is equal to os dot list dir and here i need to give a path so this os dot list dir which basically list your directory uh, kind of creates a list so this list contains all the uh, file names that is present in a particular folder so uh, in this case i'm go going to copy the path of this with mask folder and i paste it here so what happens is uh, this list directory uh, function will create a list which contains all the file names of with mask folder okay and we are storing this list in a variable called as with mask file so this is what happens so this is like you know pretty simple and then i just wanted to check the total number of files here or, or let's print the first uh, five file names of this with mask file so with mask files so i'll copy this and i'm going to say zero is to five so when i say zero colon of i i'll print the first uh, you know five files or the first five elements of the list and in the next line i'll say minus five colon so this print the last five file names so let's run this yeah as you can see so this kind of creates a list that has all the file names in this with mask directory and you can see all these image names start with with underscore mask underscore and there is a number maybe some image uh, uh, number that is present and uh, these are the first five file names and these are the last five file names so we will like use this later as well and now similarly i'll create another uh, a folder and i'll call this as uh, without mask files so without mask files so i'll copy and paste this here and now i'll copy the path of this particular folder and paste it in this line so we are just doing the same thing but for without mask folder so let's run this okay so it says you're connected to a gpu runtime but not utilizing the gpu because the only time we will use the gpu is uh, you know when the training is happening so you kind of get this warning but it's not an issue so next step that we need to do is just check how many images of mask i mean like how many with mask images are there and how many without mask images are there so we are just basically going to count the number of uh, you know elements in this list and this particular list to make sure that the data set is balanced so i'll say print number of mask with mask images and here i'll say length of with mask files and similarly let's print the number of without mask images so we have to paste this okay sorry so this should be given here 
So let's run this. So this will give us the count. So here we can see the number of uh, you know images with mask is 3725 and without mask is 3828. So this is the count that we have and we can see there is no imbalance. This is like almost equal. So we don't have any issues. Now the next step that we are going to do is create labels for these set of images. So there are like almost uh, 7500 images and we are going to create labels. So in this case creating the labels is like pretty easy. So all we have to do uh, is like create this many labels for with mask and this many labels for without mask. So this becomes an interesting challenge when all these uh, images or all these files are present in a single folder. In that case what you will do is you will read the file name of each of this file. If it is uh, starting with with mask you create the label as 0. If it starts if this file name start with without mask you create a label as 1. So that is the process that we follow. But in this case we don't have to do that because all these are like segregated. So that won't be an issue. So let's create the label as the next step. So once this labels uh, are created we can move to the image processing part where we will like display some of the images and, and do some processing on it. So I will create a text cell and text cell and name this as creating labels for the two class of images. So let's make this bold and uh, now what we can do is let's you know label this as numerical values. So I'm going to say uh, if a person is wearing a mask with mask then the label should be 1. If the person is not wearing a mask so without mask the label should be 0. Okay so this is the label encoding that we are going to do. So I'll create uh, this is the part where we are going to create the labels. So I'll create uh, I'll write a comment as create the labels and let's create a variable which is basically a list with mask labels. Okay, so with mask labels is equal to I'm going to say 1 into so this is the with mask count so I'm going to say 3725. And then I'm going to say without mask labels is equal to 0 into this number. Okay, so or what you can do is you instead of 3725, you can also put length of with mask files. In this case, you can put a length of without mask files. So uh, <clears throat> that also works. So basically I'm creating a list uh, which has only one element which is 1 and when I multiply this with 3725 this will create a list that has 3725 values and all these values will be 1. Similarly this list will contain 0 as the value for this many numbers. So I'll run this and then I'll print the first 5 and first 5 uh, you know values or values of this list and this list. So let's do that. So print with mask labels 0 is to 5 and I'll copy this and put without mask labels 0 is to 5. So let's run this. As you can see first it says uh, all the values as 1 and this is for 0. So this is what we are printing here. So this 1 and then we have this without mask labels as 0. So now what we have to do is just like make sure the count is same and then we just like uh, combine these two lists. So I'll call print length of this and the length of without mask labels. So we have 3725 with mask and 3828 without mask. So which is like the same number that we have here. So all the things have happened correctly. Now I just want to you know combine these two sets. So I'll create a new list called as labels and I'm going to say with mask labels plus without mask labels. So when I use plus 
the values won't be added if it is a numpy array that is what happens there but when you add two lists what happens is two lists will be combined so i'll use this so i'm basically like combining the two lists that we have and then we'll print the length of labels and also let's print the first five values of this list which is called as labels and the last five values as well i'm going to say minus five colon so totally we have 7553 uh, labels so first set of labels will be uh, ones and the last set of labels will be zero so i'm just like printing the first five labels and the last five labels so no issues as of now so the creating the labels part is done so the next step that we are going to do is understand how the images are looking like whether all these images are of same shape when i say shape i mean the uh, width and height of these images and then we just have to do this pre-processing of image so all these are like standard steps so i'll create a excel and i'll call this as displaying the images and for this purpose we will be using our matplotlib library so you can also use uh, cv2 underscore i'm sure but in this case i'm going to use uh, you know matplotlib so let's create a comment and say displaying with mask image so let's display one with mask image and one without mask image and let me create a variable as image so image is equal to mp img so mp img is nothing but matplotlib dot uh, image which we have imported as mp img so that is like the abbreviated form that we have imported so i'm going to say mp img dot im read so this function reads your image in the form of a numpy array and here i need to you know give the path so i know that all the all the images with mask is present in this folder so i'm going to copy the path so please don't click this sign because it basically contains more than 3000 files so it will take a lot of time to process so let's copy the path and paste it here and then we need to give a file name so here we have also printed the name of this uh, file names so i'll just like copy some number uh, in this let's let's take this one 2590 and i'll paste this here dot is it jpg or png okay so it's jpg jpg and i'll create another variable as plot image plot is equal to plt dot i am show img so we are first reading the images as num image as numpy array and then displaying it in a matplotlib plot so that's why we are using this plt which is matplotlib dot pi plot and then we have to mention this plt dot show let's run this so this is the image that we have where a person is like kind of wearing a mask so you can also like uh, copy a different file name so i'll copy this and paste it here so all, all these images will probably have uh, people wearing mask so similarly you can try for different images in this particular folder so let's see yeah, so we can see here it basically shows people who are wearing a mask and also note that the image dimensions are not uh, you know uniform throughout so i'll copy this and now let's check this for without mask image so here i'll go and copy the without mask folder path and let's paste it here and then in this file that we have printed above i'll copy this path sorry this image name and i'll put it here without mask 2925 and let's run this it, we can see here there is a person who is not wearing a mask and the main thing that we have to note here is the sizes are a bit different so this is like more than like the height is about just about 200 here it's like about 250 like here also you can see the size uh, or the width and the width in this case so all these images are of different shape so that is like one thing we have to remember so while processing these images we have to resize these images in an appropriate way so these are the other things and the next step will be to do those image processing that i have been uh, talking about so i'll create a text cell and i'll name this as image processing
so let's run this so there are two things two main things that we have to do here one is resize the images and the next one is convert the images to numpy arrays so these are the two things that we have to do and i'll create a comment as convert images to numpy arrays here i'll create a variable as with mask path so this is the path of the folder that contains all the images where people are wearing mask so let's copy this path from here and let's paste it now there is a very important thing here so at this end we have to put a forward slash so i'll tell you why this is important just a moment i'll create a empty list and i'll name this as data so next thing is creating a for loop so i'll say for image file in with mask files so this is not this uh, variable so this variable is with mask path but this is like with mask files so this is the first list that we have created right so you can see here yeah so with mask files so this is uh, the list that we are accessing so we know that this list contains the name of the files that is present in this particular folder so this is what i'm using for this for loop and i'm going to say image is equal to image dot open with mask path plus image file so let's try to understand what happens there so using a for loop i want to read all these images so the images we made file names that are mentioned here so i want to read all these images so totally there are about 3700 images so at each iteration i want to take one image and read it so for reading this i am using a function called as open so image dot open so this image is nothing but the one that we have imported from pillow library so this image again is used for processing the images and this open is for reading those images and the parameter it takes is nothing but the path of that image file so this is how we are giving this with mask path which is this content plus image file okay plus image file so what happens is when this for loop runs for the first time this image file will take the value as with mask 193.jpg okay so that is the value that this variable contains now and uh, when i say with mask path plus image file it is nothing but content data with mask forward slash and the name of th that jpg file name that i've showed you so this is why we need to add a forward slash here so if we don't add a forward slash so this will just like concatenate this image file directly to this so it will just give you a directory error so make sure you are uh, including a forward slash after this and this is the code for this okay so at each step we have to read a image after reading this we need to convert this to a standard size so i'll say image is equal to image dot resize so this pill this image dot open which we are using from pillow library won't convert your image to numpy array but to a different pillow object so that pillow object has a property of resizing so i'll say image dot resize and here uh, we have to put this parenthesis and within this parenthesis create a tuple and and mention the shape that you want to resize to so i want to to reshape this to the shape of 128 comma 128 so these are some of the standard shapes that we have so in, in some uh, you know pre trained models you need the images uh, to be in the shape of 224 comma 224 all those things but for me i'm going to create a custom convolutional neural network and i want my images to be of the shape 128 comma 128 you can also try different shape but make sure that you know is like in par with these shapes okay so don't create a, 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 or don't resize this to a very larger image so that won't work properly so here i'm going with 128 comma 128 where this number is the height of the image and this number is the width of the image so now what happens is we have seen that all these images are of different shapes 
and uh, by using this particular code snippet so using this for loop we are reading all these images and we are resizing it once we resize this we will convert it to uh, the numpy arrays and the next step i'll use is image is equal to image dot convert rgb again this is a very interesting step so this is not actually needed in all the cases but in this case this is needed because some of these files are being read as uh, you know black and white image these this particular data set basically contains your image as colored images but like very few images are uh, in the form of black and white images so if i don't include this i'm getting this issue where the images are being like the you know black and white image and you cannot train a neural network where some images are colored image and some images are, are you know a grayscale image okay so that is why we need to in include this which basically converts your image into rgb color channel okay so this is the next step so and in the next part we are going to convert this object to a numpy array so we are going to say image is equal to np dot array so it's okay if you don't understand some of the steps i'll also explain all these steps one by one once this code snippet is done so np dot array image and i'm going to say data dot append data dot append image okay so that is all so let's try to understand what happens here so first i have the path of the image which is basically to give this entire path to this image dot open so nothing complex in it and i'm creating a list called as data which is a empty list and i'm iterating this with mask with mask files which contains the name of the files of all the images where people are wearing mask and i'm iterating this through this in the first step this image file is being read using the pillow library that we have using this image uh, module using open function and then this images are being resized to 128 comma 128 shape that is the next step and later we are making sure all the images are being uh, converted to rgb or it is like staying in the same rgb format and in the next is a very crucial step of converting these images into numpy arrays using this np dot array function and once this image has been converted we are adding this numpy array to this data list okay so what happens is once this for loop uh, has been executed completely all these 3700 images will be read resized converted to numpy array and all these images will be stored in this list so this data list will contain all these images which are converted in the form of numpy arrays that is what happens i hope you are clear with this uh, like you will also like see this clearly so I'll, I'll try to show you the elements of this data list so that will make like more sense to you but there is another step that we need to do this we have done only for for the folder that contains people who are wearing a mask so we need to do the same thing for the without mask folder as well so i'll copy this entire thing but you shouldn't copy this data so we are going to add this to the same list that we have created so we just we shouldn't like include this line alone so i'll paste this <coughs> so copying and let's remove this so if you do this so you will have only like these set of images just these 3800 images only so that becomes a problem so i'll uh, rename this to without mask path and let's copy the path here also make sure the forward slash is present at the end so i'll close this <coughs> and let's paste it here and this with mask files should be replaced by without mask files which is given here all right so i'll paste this here yeah now we need to replace this here as well okay so we are doing the same thing the only difference is that once all these with mask images are processed we are giving the path of without mask images so the same process will be carried out only this path is different and then we are taking the uh, file names from this without mask files which contains around 3800 images so these names okay and once this uh, resizing has been done rgb conversion is done and we are converting to this numpy array and then we are adding to the same list which is nothing but our data that we have created initially so let's run this if uh, you have like more number of images this step will take some amount of time but for us it won't take like that much time because we the count is just like 7500 so it won't take like that much time okay so let's wait for this to complete 
okay so this is some warning while we are like you know uh, converting these images to this rgb pattern so it won't affect us as of now so let this run in the meantime i'll write few other codes length of data okay so this cell has been executed so this took around 27 seconds now this data is a list that contains uh all the images which are being which have been converted to numpy array so first I'll, I'll show you the type data type of this data so it will show that it is a list right and now i'll print the number of elements or number of uh, you know yeah basically elements in the list which is 7553 which are individual numpy arrays of individual images so here i'll print uh, okay so i'll show you this data how this data zero looks like data of zero right so all these are pixel values so you can see the values range between 0 to 255 so uh, like uh, when we convert it to numpy array we are just like talking about getting those pixel values like in three matrices one is like red intensity value a green intensity value and blue intensity value which corresponds to this rgb images that we were talking about i'm I'm assuming that you know all these things. If not, I've already made a video on how this image data is being processed. So you can like refer to that as well. And now I'll check the type of this data. So type of data of zero. So data is the list and data of zero is the first numpy array in that list. So which is the first image in that list. So we have this numpy array. Now let's also check the shape of this data of zero dot shape. This will give me the value as 128, 128, 3. So 128 is the height of the image. This 128 is the width of the image, and 3 is the color channel. If we are working on grayscale images, you won't have any values. That means actually the value is 1, which is which corresponds to one color channel. Here we have three color channels which are red, green, and blue. So we have the number as 3. Okay. So the final uh, uh, data that we got is a list that contains 7553 images, uh, which are in the form of numpy arrays. So I hope everything is clear as of now and after this like things are like pretty simple we just have to build our neural network. So we know that this data is in the form of a list now and also the labels uh, uh, is also in the form of a list. Now I don't want this in the form of a list I want to convert this again to a numpy array. So I want to convert this labels to a numpy array and also this data list to a numpy array. So let's do that. So converting image list so when i say image list i mean the list data and label list to numpy arrays so it's better to do the processing and training when, when the data is in the form of numpy arrays so that's why so i'm going to say x is equal to np dot array so this function will convert a list or a tuple or anything into an array i'm going to pass this data and we are just going to do the same thing for labels so i'll name this labels as y and instead of data, we need this as labels. Let's run this. And let's also check the type of X and Y now. So the processing has been done. So previously the data was in the, was a label. Sorry, it was a list data type. Now we have converted it to a NumPy array. NumPy and D array it basically means NumPy and dimensional array. Let's also check this for Y to make sure it is working. And now Okay, so it should be uppercase y. I'll print the shape of this x and y as the next step. And also the shape of y. So let's try to understand this shape. So this, this is the shape of uh, x. So this number means the first number is the number of numpy arrays that you have in your entire numpy array. So this x is the overall array that we have. And this array contains 7500 arrays. So that this number actually represents that. And this is like the height of each of the, these arrays. And this is the width of each of these arrays. And this is the color channel. So this is the number of images or number of numpy arrays, height, width, and your color channel. <clears throat> and this contains only one value, 7553, is nothing but your labels. So if you want, you can also you know, try to print your x and y and c so let's print y so it contains like one zero all these things which is which are your labels 
so i hope everything is clear as of now so the next is a pretty easy step of splitting your data into training data and testing data so i'll create this as train test split so let me make this in bold so i'll create four arrays x train y train sorry it should be x train x test y train and y test so all my training images will be stored in x train and the corresponding labels will be stored in y train all my test images will be stored in x test and and my test labels will be stored in y, y test and then uh, for this we'll be using the train test bit function which we have imported already from sklearn.model selection so train test bit and here we have to pass x which is, which is our image array y which is our labels array and then the next thing that we can do is your mention the test size so in this case i'm going to take like 20 percentage of the data as my testing data so i'll say test size is equal to 0 0.2 which means 20 percentage of data and next is random state random state is, is a pretty uh, simple parameter so i'll say random state is equal to 2 so it, it so each time you perform this train test split your data will be splitted randomly and if you want to reproduce your code, if you want to make sure the data is splitted in the same way, you mention the same number as random state is equal to that particular number. So here I've given this two. And if you want to split the data in the same way that I'm splitting, you should also mention the random state value as two. So that is like the importance of it. It, it is not like that much necessary and all those things. So let's run this. So the splitting process will happen. Now let's print the shape of the original array, which is six x train dot shape and x test dot shape let's run this so this is the original array which contains these many files and 80 percentage of that is 6042 and 20 percent is 1500 okay so we have uh, done this and the next part is again a crucial step of scaling your data so let's do that so i'll explain you what exactly happens here so scaling the data here i'll create a variable as x train scaled is equal to x train divided by 255 and then this is for x test scaled <coughs> so let's run this so let's try to understand why we need to do this so previously we have printed this data of zero which is the numpy array of first image so i have told you that all these are pixel values if the value is zero so somewhere the value will be zero that means for that particular pixel your color is black if the value is 255 that means color in that particular pixel is white and you have this number so this means like this is uh, somewhat in the middle like all these color ranges range between 0 to 255 okay so when it is like as we have discussed before this is a colored image so each image contains three matrix one is for what is the intensity of red color and the second matrix is what is the intensity of uh, green color and what is the intensity of blue color and for red matrix if you have the value as zero that means the color is black if the value is 255 that means the color is red so that is like the idea of it so here uh, the main thing that you need to know here is like all the values range between 0 and 255 now the in the scaling process we kind of scale down the values so that all the values ranges between 0 and 255 sorry uh, previously it lies between 0 and 255 now we want to make sure the values range between 0 and 1 so what happens is when i divide this uh, x train by 255 all these 7500 images we have right and all these images will have this kind of a numpy array all these values of all these images will be divided by 255 if the value is 0 if we divide 0 by 255 we will get 0 if the value is 255 uh, the result is 255 divided by 255 which is 1 so all the values will lie between this so the minimum value that we have is 1 sorry the minimum value that we have is 0 and the maximum value that we have is 1 so white color will be represented as one and black color will be represented as zero so this is the main idea so all you need to understand is we just have to scale down the values so previously the values are in the range of zero to 255 once we divide by 255 we get the values between zero to one so that is like the concept so nothing complicated in it and in most of this 
uh, neural network cases your model performs way better once you scale your data so that's like the other thing that you can remember i'll also show you how these values have been changed so i'll print this x train of zero which is the first image of this x train so this is before scaling you can see the values as 109 107 118 and so on now let's do the same but we are going to print the same image in x train scaled where we have applied this scaling factor x train scaled of zero so the result of these two cells are basically the same image the only difference is that now the scaling has been done so that is what is mentioned here so if the value is a zero that value will be zero if the value is 255 year and the value will be one year so all the values will lie in between them so that is like the concept behind it and uh, yeah so the image processing part is done and now let's let's move on to the part of building our neural network so i'll create a text cell and i'll name this as building a convolutional neural network so i may not be able to explain all the you know uh, building blocks of this cnn as of now because the purpose of this video is is just to understand how this implementation comes together uh, i'm about to make this course on deep learning so in that i'll clearly explain you the basics of neural networks and, and what is the importance of convolutional neural networks what is the importance of convolutional layers max pooling layers and all those things but for now let's focus on the implementation part alone so being a convolutional neural network and as i've told you here we will be using two libraries one is tensorflow and the other one another one is keras so here import tensorflow as tf and let's also import from tensorflow import keras okay so let's try to understand the importance of these two libraries so tensorflow and pytorch are the widely used libraries in order to build neural networks so tensorflow is the library uh, developed by google and pytorch is the library that is developed by facebook and keras is just a wrapper of these libraries so keras is not a standalone library so we will you know have this apis of sequ sequential convolutional layers all this from the keras library but it is just like a wrapper of these libraries so keras need either tensorflow or pytorch in its backend okay so previously uh, this keras was uh, you know this library was present individually so what you do is import this keras and you also install the tensorflow libraries and you mentioned that uh, the back end of this keras is tensorflow or it can be pytorch so later once people have started using it so what happened just like tensorflow kind of included keras in its library itself so that is what we are doing so we are only you know importing the tensorflow library or installing it keras kind of comes with it so first we are importing this tensorflow library stf and from this tensorflow library we are importing this keras module alone so i hope this is clear and in the next step we can build a neural network so here i'll create a variable as number of classes so here we should mention the total number of class that you have class of images here we have two class of images one is with mask and the another one is without mask so here let's create a variable as model is equal to keras dot sequential there are like multiple ways to do this so one is like we create this model is equal to keras dot sequential and then we create a, a list within this and then like what i do is uh like add more layers here so i'll just say model dot add or uh, no or uh, just say that we won't say model dot add so we will say like keras dot layers or something like that and we put a command and uh, add all the layers like that so there is also another way of doing this which is you create this model is equal to keras dot sequential and you mention the parenthesis here and you say model dot add this is the other way of adding layers to your neural network so sequential is like this is where we stack all the layers together so this is the first thing that we need to do and in this add we can add different types of layers so the first layer that we add is uh, keras dot layers dot convolutional layer so con 2d so 2d convolutional layer and here we need to give some parameters the first parameter is your filters and i'm setting the filter number to 32 here and we should also mention the kernel size so you can like work around these different values so i mean you can't use any number that you think there are like standard numbers that you can use so you can like refer to it 
So here I'm going to use the kernel size as 3 comma 3 and there is a activation function. So I'll explain about this activation function, convolutional layers, all these things in our deep learning course. For now, let's see how to implement this. Okay. So ReLU. ReLU is basically your rectified linear uh, units. So you also have other types of uh, activation functions like your um, softmax, sigmoid and all those things. So we are creating the sequential and then we are adding this convolutional layer as the first layer with 32 as the filters kernel size of 3 comma 3 activation function of relu and uh, the next thing that we need to do is give the input shape so this is very very important so this input shape is equal to 128 comma 128 so if you are working on a different problem if you have a different set of images the other things can remain the same but like this you should change depending upon what's the shape of your image and this is why i mentioned you that if you want to train a neural network make sure all these images are of the same shape or same dimension so here we know that all the images are of 128 comma 128 comma 3 because we have resized all those things and again if you have rgb images uh, make sure you mention 3 if you have grayscale images you shouldn't have any values here so it, it should be like this but in this case this is a colored image so we are mentioning this as 128 comma 128 comma 3 the first is your keras.layers.convolutional2d your 32 kernel size of 3 comma 3 activation of relu input shape of 128 128 and 3 and the next layer that we will add is our max pooling layer so model so this convolutional layers and max pooling layer are two most you know important part of convolutional layers so normal artificial neural networks we don't have this we just have an input layer we uh, have some hidden layers and we have output layers so the only additional thing that we have in convolutional layer is like different number of convolutional layers and max pooling layers okay so i'll add this model dot add keras dot layers dot max pooling 2d so here m p and d should be in caps and there is actually like you don't have to do this keras dot layers dot um, 2d uh, like if you see each at each layer we use this keras dot layers so the other way to do this is you can import this conv 2d max pulling 2d all this from keras itself so that will also work but for now let's stick to this particular uh, you know syntax and, and code style again you can try these things by importing this keras and layers before itself so that you know things will become like much easier there so here i'll say max pulling 2d and here we have to mention the pool size as 2 comma 2 okay that is done and this is the first convolutional layer and max pooling layer and i'm going to add more convolutional layers to it i'll just add like one more pair of convolutional layer and max pooling layer here so here we have to change like let's change this filters to 64 kernel says let it be 3 comma 3 activation is also relu okay i think the other things let it be the same okay so we shouldn't include this input shape so the input shape should be present only in your first layer it's like telling the neural network like this is the shape of the image that you will get so you need to mention that only at the start so you don't need to mention that anywhere else so that is like one thing that you can remember so we have the only change that we have made is like filters are there kernel size again kernel size are i'm giving the same the only difference is your uh, filter size so first it's 32 next we have 64 now we can add like flattened layers and and more dense layer to our uh, model which is model dot add Keras dot layers dot flatten. So this is a very important layer. So you, we use this in, in any neural network that we build. So this is basically while passing your data or image to your model. So this should be passed as a single dimensional, uh, you know, data. So if you can see, this is in the form of a matrix, right? So we can't pass this directly. So we flatten this. Flatten. What happens is like this two dimensional uh, data which is in the form of a matrix will be converted to something kind of a vector some kind of a vector where the data is in, in only one uh, dimension so that is the purpose of this flatten so this is like again a standard thing that we do in any neural networks that we create so flatten is the next layer and then we are going to add more dense layer which are dense layer means like all the net all the neurons in this layer is connected to all the neurons of the previous layer so we call this as dense layer or basically or hidden uh, layers then so say model dot add <coughs> keras dot layers dot dense 
and I'll say 128. Activation is equal to relu. So the different so this is like the total number of neurons that you have in your network so uh, what this means is like in this first hidden layer or, or this first dense layer i want 128 neurons so the there are like standard numbers that we use so the numbers can be 256 or it can be 128 or it can be 64 or 32 so if you notice all these are powers of 2 this is just to basically that uh, regarding this like memory allocation all these things so things will be better or, or it's like memory efficient if you use the values in powers of 2 so that's the idea again nothing complicated in it so make sure you start with a larger number and you reduce the number of neurons in the further layers so in this case i'll start with this 128 uh, neurons and in the next layer i will have like 64 neurons again all these are like powers of 2 so make sure like you are using something similar to that and after this i'm going to add a dropout layer so this is again done to make sure there is no overfitting issue that may arise so keras dot layers dot dropout so uh, this is just like turning off some of the neurons in our uh, neural network so that it reduces the risk of the model getting overfitted so that's the thing so I'll, I'll again this is like the magnitude of how much dropout you to add i'll give the value of 0 0.5 so and then i'll again create another uh, dense layer so I'll copy this code and I'll paste it here and now as I've told you I'm going to use 64 neurons in this layer I'll, I'll have the other things the same dropout layer and there is like relu all this thing you can also build your code with uh, without dropout as well again but there is a chance of your model getting overfitted and uh, yeah I think finally we can build our output layer so there is again an important thing that we need to note here so it should be the same keras.layers. Dense, but here this number should be the total number of class that you have in your data here the class is 2 right so this is why I have created a variable here so you can also say 2 but sometimes it's not like easier to understand why we have used 2 here so that's why it's always better to store this 2 in a variable and use this variable here so always we mention the number of classes uh, you know in this layer again if you use a different class function we don't have to like sometimes like you don't need to have two neurons one neuron is sufficient because in that case we use a different loss function but let's not go into all those details as of now Let, let's discuss that at, at some other use case video so in this case uh, just remember that the number of neurons should be the total number of class that you have which is two okay so what happens is like if uh, mask image is predicted one neuron will give the value as uh, you know it's just a probability so two neurons are there right so one neuron will give a probability for an image being masked image and the other neuron will give a probability of the image being uh, without mask image right so from this like the model try to say which is the highest probability and we get the prediction so that is also that is why we have these uh, you know the value as two in this case so i hope this is fine and here i'm going to set the activation function as sigmoid so sigmoid is used mainly in the case of binary classification problem and uh, there is also another uh, again there are several activation functions the relu sigmoid are like the often used ones there is another activation function called a softmax so that softmax is used when you have a multi class classification problem where you have like more than two classes to predict okay so i hope everything is clear as of now so first we are creating this keras dot sequential in which we are going to stack all our layers and then we are adding our convolutional layer max pooling layer with this set of kernel values kernel size and like sorry this is the filter value kernel size and all those things similarly we are creating another set of convolutional layer and max pooling layer and then there is a flatten layer and a two dense layer and a final output layer with a sigmoid activation function so let's run this so uh, this is just like setting up the architecture for our neural network so the training has not been done yet so there are like there is another thing that we have to do before training our neural network which is compiling it so this step is compile the neural network so when i say compile it means we have to set optimization algorithm and and loss function metrics for a neural network so i'll say model dot compile optimizer is equal to adam optimizer again so there are like different optimizers that we have so we will discuss all those things in our course but let's use the standard ones in this case sparse categorical cross entropy 
So if you have one not encoded labels, you can go with categorical cross entropy. If you have numerical encoded label, you can go with sparse categorical cross entropy. So that's something you can remember. And here I'm going to set the metrics as in this list, we have to mention ACC. So ACC means accuracy. Again, these are like standard things. So in this compile, we need to have optimizer, loss function and your metrics. So I'll run this. And the next step is training our neural network. Training the neural network. So here we have to say, I'll, I'll store this in a variable called as history. So this history is equal to model dot fit. So all this training, uh, you know, checkpoints will be stored here. I, uh, again, if you do this, it's better to build the plots. So that is why we are doing that. So model dot fit. So make sure you are passing your extreme scaled, which is your scale data. So extreme scaled comma white train and validation split. So I'll explain you what is meant by validation split while this training happens. I'm going to set this validation split as 10 percentage, which is 0 0.1. And I'm going to set only lesser number of epochs because we just have a smaller data set. So I'm not going to give many epochs. So that may lead to overfitting and, and you know, it might not give a significant increase in the accuracy. So I'm going to set the epochs as 5. So this is the model training part. So model.fit, extrain scaled, which is your scaled image data. White trains are your labels validation split and epochs let's run this again so this training happens really quickly if you enable gpu from this runtime if you are working on cpu this is going to take a very long time so make sure you are on your gpu environment so let's try to understand about this validation split uh, validation split is just similar to your test split it is it is just to understand how your model is performing on unknown data at each epoch so if you see we have this loss value and your accuracy value so our main goal is that the accuracy value should increase and your loss value should in, should decrease right and at each step we reserve 10 percentage of data at each epoch we reserve 10 percentage data as our validation data so your training will be done on the 90 percentage of the data and in the remaining 10 percent your validation will be uh, carried out here so if there is overfitting you can see here itself your uh, training accuracy will be high but your validation accuracy will be low just for that purpose so usually when we train we kind of like do this so okay after five epochs we get a training accuracy of 93 percentage and the validation accuracy of almost 91 percentage so there is again if, if you can see there is not a significant increase in the accuracy values so you can like again try with the different epochs you can try with different optimizers so i'm leaving that up to you so yeah again you can try all those things but i'm just settling this for now so the other thing so this took 30 seconds again you can experiment with training this on cpu and maybe you can also find like how much time that it takes but this we are like fine with this as of now the last thing that we are going to do is just do the model evaluation on our test data to make sure the model is performing well on the unknown data set itself so that is so this validation split is split from the training data but previously we have set aside some the test data in this x test and the corresponding labels are in y test right so you can test that using this particular thing so i'll put this as model evaluation and here i'll say loss comma accuracy is equal to model dot evaluate i'll say x test scaled comma white test so i'm passing the test data and again we won't pass the white test here actually what happens is like only this data will be passed to the model and once the prediction has been made it will be uh, you know compared with the original ground truth which is your white test and loss is your test data loss and accuracy is your test data accuracy they'll also print this print test accuracy so this test accuracy is equal to let's say accuracy so let's run this right, so the accuracy is like almost 92 percentage so the training accuracy is 93 percentage and test accuracy is 92 percentage so it's the model is like working uh, well so like no issues in that now let's just like visualize these uh, plots plots are like how your loss has changed and of your you know uh, your accuracy has changed those things so for that I'm going to so this is why we have fitted this model with a variable called as history. So I'll say h is equal to your history. And here first we are going to plot 
the loss value. Then say plt, which is our matplotlib library, plt dot plot and h dot history. And in this square bracket, we have to mention loss. So this loss is nothing but the values that is present here. So all this we can get from this history, h dot history or history dot history of loss. And here we have to give the label as training. So this is not that label. This is the label for our plots and graphs. So I'll say train loss. That means like training data loss. And just similar thing. This is for h dot history of val loss. So just loss is for training loss. This is for validation loss. Let's call this as validation loss. Okay, label is equal to validation loss. Okay, everything is fine. And then you can say plt dot legend. Again, this these are all the characteristics of the plot that we are building. So you will be sure about this. Again, you won't have any doubts if you have worked somewhat on this matplotlib library and then let's we have plotted this loss value and then let's print the accuracy value so this is just to visualize like how your accuracy and loss function has changed over the course of your training of five epochs so usually we train with a larger number of epochs just because like uh, the data is small we are just settling with lesser number of epochs so here instead of loss we have to mention acc which is your accuracy training accuracy and here val underscore acc the validation accuracy so here i'll call this as accuracy yeah so this should do the work let's run this and see how this plot is building right so this is like uh, the plot that we are getting so again there is like kind of a zigzag thing but ideally how this should be is when when we start the loss function value will be here so from IA loss value, we try to minimize that so that like it kind of reduces. So this blue color is for training data loss and orange color is for validation loss. And similarly, this is for accuracy. Accuracy, like again, it starts from a lower value and it kind of reaches a higher value. If your data is good, if you have a good neural network and all those things. So I hope you know what is meant by this loss and accuracy. Loss is basically how much your, you know, what's the difference between your true value and your predicted value. Or you can think about as the distance or the difference between your true value and the predicted value given by your model accuracy is like how many current predictions it's like making so if your loss decreases your accuracy increases so that's what you can also see here i hope uh, so far it's clear and finally let's build our predictive system where we can pass an image and that will give you a prediction so i'll call this as predictive system Again, so you won't get 100% correct results in this case because your model is trained on a data set. I wouldn't say that is like very qualitative. Uh, again, if you want better prediction, you need to give it more uh, images to train on. So that is like something that I would say. Again, this will perform well, but again, it depends on the data that you are feeding it. So I won't, I won't expect like 100% accuracy in this case because of the data that we have trained on. If you get data similar to the ones that we have trained on if you get the data that is in this test data set in that case it would perform well but let's try this with some data that we have got from the internet let's see how it's performing so i'll create a variable as input image path so how this will work is so when i run this cell it should ask for the path of the image to be predicted once i give that path this image should be displayed and it should give a prediction of whether that person is wearing a mask or not in that image so this is the idea so here first we need to give a path as input right so i'll create uh, input function here so input so it should say path of the image to be predicted okay so next step input image is equal to so we need to read this from this uh, path so the path will be given by the user so from this we have to read the image and convert it to a numpy array that is the first step and for that we'll be using cv2.imread again you can use pillow the reason i'm using cv2.imread is i'm going to display it using google.collab.patches that you know cv2im show function so you can't read it through pillow right so we have this right so if you want to display it through the cv2im show you need to read this as numpy array but if you use image.open it won't be read as a numpy array but a different pillow object so that's why i'm reading this using cv2.imread and here we need to pass the path of the image which is this input image path right and we use a cv2 underscore show 
and here we have to so this is again a numpy array and put this here so this will basically display your image and then the next step is remember we have resized all the images right so the image if the model is going to predict the image that image should also be resized so i will say input image resize is equal to cv2 also as this resize thing so i'll use the one in this is the previous one that we use is with the pillow library so this one is with uh cv2 so input image comma so mention like what is the shape that you are expecting so i want the images to be in 128 comma 128 so you don't need to mention three it, is, it will be in color and then uh, it should be scaled as well so all the processing that we done before should also be done here so input image scaled is equal to this one input image resized divided by 255 and image so uh, the next thing is we have to reshape this so input image a reshape so i'll explain you why this reshaping is done mp dot reshape input image scaled and one comma one twenty eight comma one twenty eight comma three then we have input prediction model dot predict so i'll explain you why i've given this number just a moment so input prediction is equal to model dot predict input image reshaped let's also print this input prediction so that we are clear like what's the result is looking like now input prediction label is equal to np dot argmax max of input prediction and let's print this label as well if this input red label is one we have to say we have to print the person in the image is wearing a mask else so else means the prediction is zero we have to say the person in the image is not wearing a mask okay so let's try to understand this so first let's run this and see if it's working so i have this input image path okay so here the user gives in the path of the image that should be predicted and we have this input image so we are reading this image from the path given by the user and we are displaying this image as the first step and then we are resizing the image to the shape that we have trained our model and then we are scaling the image and this is the reshape part so this is what i need to explain you here previously for test data we have used this model dot evaluate where all the images will be predicted of zero or one right in this case we are just predicting for only one image so we need to reshape this so that the model knows we are predicting the label for only one image so we have this one so this one just says that i'm predicting for only one image and the height of the image is 128 width is this and this and the color channel is this this, this is why we have this reshape and for this we are going to use this reshape mp dot reshape i'll repeat this uh, we are doing this to tell the model that i'm making prediction for only one data point so that's the case and once you do this reshape you feed this to the model so this is the model that we build using this keras model or predict input image and the thing is machine learning models will give you the prediction as either zero or one but that's not the case in the case in, in this like keras neural networks so you will get the prediction as probability values so as as i've told you before here we have like uh, two neurons in the last layer so each of this neuron will give you a probability score so one neuron will give you a probability like what's the probability that the image being a person wearing a mask and the other neuron tells you the probability of the person not wearing a mask so like it, it's basically a list that contains two probability values so we need to choose the one that has a higher probability so if 
you know uh, it will be like evident once i you know run this because we will print this uh, you know probability values as well and the np.argmax max if the first value is maximum it will this np.argmax will return the value as 0 if the second value is maximum it will return the value as 1 so that's why we have this so basically this step is done to convert this probability values to our respective label values so that is all and then we are printing that label value as well so if this label value is 1 we say that the person is wearing a mask if the else else means the value will be 0 so we say the person is not wearing a mask so before this we just like pass some test images so i have downloaded few images from the internet and i have like stored this somewhere in my desktop so i'll see so i have this as test.jpg and test.png i'm not sure if this will work correctly but let's see so first i'll copy this test.png i think this is the one where person is wearing a mask so i'll copy that and yeah so i'll, I'll run this now this will ask for us to give the path so paste the path that you have copied which is test.png so this should display the image right so it says the person is wearing a mask so path of the image to be predicted we give that and this is the result so we have this probability value right so this is nothing but the input prediction so if you see this first value is the probability that the person is not wearing a mask because it is zero and the second value is the probability that the person is wearing a mask so here the second value is maximum so we get the value as one so this is what np.argmax will do if the first value is maximum uh, it will give the value as zero if the second value is maximum it will give the value as one if it is one we say the person is wearing a mask using this if condition if it is zero we say the person is not wearing a mask so that is all i'll copy this if you want you can also put this in a function instead of copying and pasting this every time so that also works so that is like up to you so this image is displayed using the cv2 underscore i am show so this one that we are predicting is nothing but this so in print input print label right so that one so i'll run this again now i'll paste the jpg so let's see if this works properly so i'll go to this test G jpg and i'll paste this let's see if it's predicting correctly it should say the person is not wearing a mask okay so it says the person is not wearing a mask so here we are displaying this using this cv2 underscore i'm show and we are predicting this like sorry printing this prediction using this uh, input prediction and finding this label as either zero or one using this argmax np.argmax here you can see the first value is maximum and the second value is less so we get the value as zero and it says you know if else if the label is not one we say it's zero that the person is not wearing a mask so this is what we are printing is not wearing a mask but if you see here the probability difference is not that much different so it, i mean the model is like just in a confusion of whether it is a whether it is a class of zero or one but zero is slightly more so the model tells the person is not wearing a mask again this depends on the data set that we have trained on the data that we have trained our model is different and the ones that we are using to predict is different that's why we getting this and if you generally if you use a larger data set to train a model often your neural network will give like amazing performances so that is the one thing that i wanted to add so i hope everyone is clear as of now so i'll just give you a quick recap of all those things that we have done to just like wrap things up so we have started with importing uh, the kaggle library so we for importing this data set from kaggle through the api make sure that you have this kaggle.json so i have showed you how you can download this and uh, this code is like standard so this is just configuring the path of your kaggle file and this is the api to get your kaggle data so use exclamatory market and uh, we know that the data set is uh, loaded as a zip file so we are using this snippet to extract this file and this is to see like what are the files are there in this directory so we are importing all the dependencies that we need and we are creating like two lab two list one with the file names of all the images with label sorry with mask and the another one is like for all those images where the person is not wearing a mask so those two things and we are printing like how many number of mask images are there and how many non images without mask are there so that thing and again we are creating the labels based on this number so first this many ones and this many zeros again these are like pretty obvious and then we are displaying these images to see like how the images are looking like and we see that the images are of different shape so now we need to resize this images converted converted to numpy array and that we are using this for loop to do that purpose for with mask images and without mask images so until this like the image processing part are done so we are just checking the shape and all those things 
and then later we are converting this list where data which is the list of images and labels is the list of labels so we are converting that to the numpy array using this uh, you know line of code and then we are you know splitting the data into training data and test data and after that scaling is done to make sure all the pixel values are between 0 and 1 so after that is done we are building our convolutional neural network so this is the architecture of this convolutional neural network and uh, the compiling part where we add our atom optimizer loss function matrix and all those things and we have just like sticking to a uh, lower number of epochs as of now to just make sure like there is uh, you know less chance of model getting overfitted those things and we are like evaluating the model with by passing you know the test scale data and this is just like uh, visualizing your uh, your loss changes and accuracy changes and finally we have built a predictive system where you can give the you know uh, path of the image and it will like tell you whether that person is wearing a mask or not so this is like in, in the development phase if you want to deploy this uh, you know in a ui or, uh, or an api is like what you do is like you store this neural network as a file and uh, you know you can like uh, uh, deploy this in the form of a api and create a post api basically so in that post api you post that image and your uh, api sorry your model is residing in that api so it will give you a response of whether a person is wearing a mask or not or the other thing that you can do is just create a simple streamlit ui once the you know once the user is uploading the image so that should be fed to the model that we are building again that can call the api of your model or you can also have your model in the local and just like give a response and you can just print in that streamlit ui that the person is wearing a mask or not so that is like i'll, I'll give that up to you you can like work on the deployment part okay so i hope everyone is clear uh, until this point and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching